Statement 17 Paving the way There is no secret to the believers in the world about what happened to Jesus Christ, glory be to him, during his first coming from the pain and betrayal of the tyrants, the prosecutions and the presence of enemies and entrants around him, until he was handed over the ruler because of the incitement carried out of the Jewish temple. In the second coming, the enemies of Christ will increase more and more because Herod this time is more powerful and stronger than Herod of that time. And the temple today is stronger and more ruthless and support kings and rulers in their political decisions and the killing of peoples under the pretext of combating terrorism and other arguments. The Father wished that Christ would have contemporary disciples who would prepare for him the way to his second coming and so establish his kingdom which will save the oppressed and the poor in the world so that the enemies of Christ, glory be to him, would not be able this time to oppress him. They themselves would be the ones who will fight for him. Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders, but now my kingdom is from another place. It is clear that the intended servants or disciples who redeem Christ by themselves and fight not to let him be handed over to the rulers and tyrants are the ones concerned with the second coming, not the first. The Bible has stated by other texts proving what we have come to, that Christ, glory be to him, has disciples who will pave him the way before his second coming and separate his knowledge which is impossible for all the fathers of the church and the researchers to come up with a letter from it. This is the text that Isaiah the Baptist has cited. A voice of one calling. In the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. This text was cited by John the Baptist in the first coming because he is the one who paved the way for our Christ, glory be to him. But the text itself means paving the way and configuring the way for the Christ, the Savior, in the second coming as well, because the Father's purpose is to establish his just kingdom on earth and to do justice to the downtrodden. This has not yet been realized and the world is still waiting impatiently for it. For this, we understand the importance of configuring the road and the importance of the presence of pavers before Christ's sunrise, the Son of Man, where every watchful eye is waiting for him. In the book of Malachi, he mentioned the subject of paving the way in chapter 3. I will send my messenger, who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of covenant, whom you desire, will come says the Lord Almighty. Who will be the day of his coming, and who will stand before his appearance? For he is like the fire of the scoundrel. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like refiner's fire, or launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. We understand from this text that acknowledging the call of the returned Savior who was before the Father requires great faith and those who enjoy this degree of faith are the few and rare people where believers will undergo difficult exams and trials to be chosen, and the Lord will come to surprise the world by his coming at a time 
where all nations and rulers are engaged in war, killing, and enmity, where the world is far away from the Father, the Son, and the Gospel. But the coming Christ will show its truth and the mechanism of the Son of Man's return with his disciples, who will judge the world beside Christ, as Jesus' glory be to him said to them. Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. In the Gospel of John, Christ mentioned this text. I have another sheep who are not from this barn. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. In this text, there is an extreme reference to the fact that Christ, glory be to him, disciples and partisans, who are not of that world in the first coming, but in the blessed world of return. In general, contemporary disciples are the ones who are tasked to pave the way and gather the rest of the electorate to fulfill the Old Testament prophecies, and so that Christ will return to establish the future kingdom of the Father, the dream of all those waiting in the world.